Oh, Fucking knackered. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Okay, so there's not actually that many in them. There. That's uh, sixteen, so I'll be doing the last three. Same as this then, I suppose. So we've got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So same as here. Be driving whatever I like for the last little bit. We good? Then we head into group B where out of 16 track sets I've got to do, there's only uh, Oh, sorry. Shit, rather. There's more cars, there's 17 cars. So the van's getting ditched. So, in general, when I call something non binary colours, I ignore black and white because black and white just exist everywhere. Same thing as trans colours, you can just ignore the white. Light, light blue and light pink. So effectively you have a yellow blanket. But they are good colours, despite the fact they really shouldn't go together, they somehow do. Piss, 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 piss. Full send now. I think I've driven enough through all of the countries now to say that they definitely got better with time. Like, I really don't enjoy Finland that much. You just never seem to be able to get any speed up. You're constantly just like flicking. Ah, piss. Finland is. Yeah. Then there's some weird shit in. Oh, the S1. Fucking Sidia, that's it. 
Japan I really enjoy. Norway might. Norway's got some good tracks and some bad tracks. But Finland's kind of like. I mean, worst out of a great bunch for sure. It's not bad by any means, but it is just out of the out of everything else. Mm. Oh yeah, I like them all. Finland's probably the only one where I feel like if it was added as a DLC it would have been a bit underwhelming. But it was the first one they made. So, you know, that's kind of why you end up with weird shit that would never be in actual real Finland races and why there's no super fast stages in Finland despite that's like what it's known for in real rallying. How did I manage to crash on that corner earlier than I did in the dry? Despite knowing it was coming. Could also just be because I'm bored of Finland and Norway having ground them from uh, the racy whatever thing. Uh, career mode, because they're the fastest countries. Whereas Germany still feels about as fresh to me as... Um, uh, as Indonesia or Australia, really. Actually, no, Australia feels brand new to me because I really haven't played it that much. I've played it, like, a couple of times outside of doing this. Aviari is good, yeah. You don't get to play it in the speedrun. At least in Group 2 you don't. You don't get to play it because it's a shit map. It's really long, so you reset if you see it. That is why I am very glad that we have these custom rallies where you can do what I'm doing right now as a speedrun. If I wasn't doing this and I was playing Catface instead, I think I'd be each week each week off that we've got for Catface. I think I'd be trying to set uh, as good a time as I could on the 12 stage rallies to learn the tracks so like we know we've got Germany coming up next so hit it up in Germany on the 12 stager every track in the game boom done
Oh, you reset your campaign. Yes, I'm actually doing it. This is still going to be my main thing even when Catface restarts, you know, next week for Germany. I'm still going to be trying to push as many of these out as I can. But hopefully if I can get at least two done a day. Yeah, got a fair old bit left. Yeah, yeah, it's going to get a bit quicker and a bit quicker. Slowly but surely. And I'm well over halfway. Like, I'm so glad that I did the, uh, the silly vehicles, the bonus vehicles first. Because, God, if I got to the end, vans might have been alright. But if I'd got to the end of Group A and fucking had to jump in the logging truck. And then, yeah. In fact, the logging truck is the last one I would have done if I'd have done it that way around. I did the logging truck first because it was the last one in the game. So I did it backwards for the first four, then jumped into Group 2. I would have been broken right now. Because actually, I'd be on Group A right now. If I'd been doing them in that order, the amount of tracks I've done, obviously I'd have probably done... Actually, I probably wouldn't have done that much more. Because the, the time kind of isn't enough to make it like I can do more in a day, most of the time, the faster cars. Like, yeah, it probably knocks five or six minutes off per country, maybe ten for, like, Germany or something. Each, and that's, like, each class that's faster, but... It's not like it's halving it. Other, well, logging... I will be very interested once I've finished Group A to have a look at what my total logging time is compared to my total Group A time. That will be quite interesting. What does a lot of driving and a faster car... Like, I will know all the tracks properly. Or probably decently. By the time I get to Group A. There'll be some muscle memory there.
Piss. Yeah, it would be brutal to finish with logging. I don't even know the tree skip. I know of it. I remember when Indonesia first came out. And the f before I'd even managed to get home to download it. Oh, it's there, isn't it? It's literally that tree. Before I'd even managed to get home to download it, Wes had gone in the logging truck and done the fucking tree skip. And I, like, I'm on my phone at lunch. I'm looking at the Discord. And there's a guy who's just like, whoop, in a fucking logging truck. Like, what? And then I was told that a load of other people who are way better. I was like, oh, that must be easy then, I'll do it. I'll, I'll, you know, jump in group A or something and do it. And I was told that a load of people were really struggling to do it in any class whatsoever. And Wes is just there like, rum, 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 logging truck go burr. Oh yeah, definitely save some time. There's a small chance it's worth going for if you... Even in these track... Even in these speedruns. The 12 track ones. Because you just stick this... You don't have to do them in order. So you just stick this track at the start. Or the regular version of this track at the start. And then... Uh, then rip it. Reset, 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 reset. Constantly.
I wonder how long uh, Catface Germany is going to be. Like, is it going to be some of the really long tracks or. Is it going to be mostly the shorter middle range? Well, it's still going to be long, but like, it could be brutally long. I mean, even without repeating a track in its opposite direction, which I don't think uh, Nept wants to do. Rip fucking... Uh, what's it against it? I have considered doing an Art of Endurance bullshit mini-event where we take the longest stage in Germany the one whichever one's got the slowest world record of the two Farschweilers basically <laughs> front or back 12 rain of it just run 12 of them in the rain or potentially force people to do them back to back forwards and backwards so that you can't actually properly learn the stage you're never playing the same stage twice. Just break up your rhythm. Then And then the final stage is in the dry just to really fuck with you. Build up all that muscle memory and just to really fuck with you. There is a way, I've been told, and have tested, I don't know how you generate them, but there is a way to make custom rallies, and use them in game, and have multiple countries in the same rally. So it is possible to do every country's longest stage, no it isn't, you can't do every, yeah you can, yeah we could do every country's longest stage, so, I was thinking 16 because you wouldn't be able to do every country's longest stage in the wet and the dry, so 5. I can't remember what file it is, um, I did get given one. And I used it, and it's quite interesting because it's it's so flawless when you do it. Like it really is so flawless. But I think it's just the fact that the only thing stopping you from making a rally, because the stage names are whatever what we've just seen in the leaderboards.txt, the only thing stopping you from making that rally is the UI blocking you from. You know, you pick a country first, and then you pick the tracks in a second menu. That's the only real thing blocking you from doing that. Mm. I remember what file it was. It was literally... You know when you make a rally, then 
make a custom rally, then save and quit to title. It was that file. We just booted that file in there. And so that when you loaded a custom rally, it said, do you want to resume your rally? Are you getting ads? Because, like, pretty much everybody says not getting ads. I'll take your silence to mean you are getting ads and currently can't see this. Oh, you actually got ads. Holy shit. So many people have said they're just never getting ads. Like, they see that message. I see the whole thing on Twitch saying it's running ads. I actually thought it was broken for a bit. I, like, I thought my chat notification bot was broken, so I had to check on Twitch's end that it was actually running ads. Because it should be, because the chat bot isn't the thing controlling the ads. The chatbot just reads when Twitch says we're about to run an ad and posts the message. Like most of the time people say they're just not getting ads, which is quite funny. I think it's a Twitch problem because I get it in like bigger streams, you see half the chat going ads and half the chat going no ads. So in smaller streams where actually like there's one person watching, if there's a 50% chance that I get ads normally, then there's a 50% chance that anyone gets ads. Yeah. There was a period where I thought Twitch's ads just didn't work. Uh, couldn't be ad blocked, sorry. Like, ad blocker just didn't work on Twitch. Then I went on Twitch without an ad blocker and I realised it blocks all the ads except for the in video ones. But the reason it can't, most of the time, can't block the in video ones is because Twitch serves those adverts straight from the same servers that they serve the actual stream from. So, that's the best way to block ads. <laughs> or, or to have ads be unblockable is just to have them not served from an advertising website. Like have them baked into the website. But if you serve them through AdSense, then they're just going to block the AdSense domain. If you've got a domain entirely dedicated to adverts, it has no reason to be on anyone's computer. It's getting fucking yeeted. But if you put it on the same, same server, but YouTube can't do that because they're processing the fact that they are owned by an advertising company of Google. Do you find it quite funny how Google still doesn't have adverts on the homepage and peop some people applaud them for that despite the fact that they are literally the biggest advertising company in the world but also nobody uses the Google homepage particularly anymore 
Google took over the browser market, cornered the search engine, so your default search engine in Firefox and Chrome and Edge is Google. I know Edge is Bing, Edge still has Bing, but you can, you can get it by default. Yeah, Twitch isn't too bad. I think the key thing with Twitch is it depends what you're watching. So I was ill one day and had to watch stuff on my phone. And so no ad block on YouTube. And it was fine because I was watching longer stuff. But when I've been sat at work or whatever on a lunch break or you're just, you know, in the car or something. And I just want to watch one random clip and you get 30 seconds of adverts before a 15 second clip so YouTube is fine if you're watching two hour documentary shit oh yeah now so what it is you get you can either get 30% of the ad revenue or 50% of the ad revenue if you do 50 if you play enough ads to get 50% of the ad revenue you never have any pre-roll adverts so when people immediately click on your stream they don't get an advert. So I currently have pre-roll ads off because I run the precise number of adverts needed to keep pre-roll ads off, which is 90 seconds every half an hour, or you can do it uh, three minutes every hour, or you can do it every... F you can do fucking 30 seconds every 10 minutes or whatever it is. Yeah, 30 seconds every 10 minutes. And I've I'm not quite sure what the balance is to be struck with all that, to be honest, still. I'm not quite sure. I've gone with the 30, the 90 seconds every every uh, half an hour, but it's pretty brutal. 90 seconds is a long time. Yeah, yeah, so if you turn pre-roll adverts off, you have to be running enough adverts to keep them off. It used to be just a setting. But I'm still not sure about it, because honestly, I run these adverts constantly. And I make, even when I see the numbers, and I people are telling me they're getting adverts, and then I see the amount of money that I end up with, and... It's, it's zero. It's just always zero. The best day I did was when I did a half hour stream. I somehow got 2p. Did a half hour stream, got two viewers and fucking got 2p. So it's one of them where I think because the numbers are so small, it might not even be worth running adverts at all and just letting the pre-rolls. Just being like, fuck it, pre-rolls only. I need to have a look again because I've kind of just left it on. I turned it back on to see if I could make like a little bit more or something, if there was anything to it. Because I did see that like from time to time I would get paid out from the pre-rolls. So I did think, oh, if I can get the higher rate of pay, then maybe that would be good. Because I, I can see all the stats of how many viewers average I've got. Which is usually like one or two. Like these aren't numbers. Um, but yeah, one or, you know, viewers. But I can also see that if I stream for an hour, I'll get maybe 15 people come in the stream. So 15 people coming in the stream is that much. Maybe it's, maybe if they never stay, it's worth having the pre roll lads for the money people that clearly aren't staying anyway because my viewers haven't changed like twitch's whole thing with pre-roll ads is people leave if you have pre-roll ads they click and then they go immediately i get the same average viewers with pre-roll ads as without and i get the same number of clips through yeah shit loads more ads eventually buy a bike There is actually something I want to do which does tie in slightly. Oh no, it doesn't anymore. You used to have to have 100 quid, 100 dot USD in your Twitch account to be able to cash it out. Now it's gone down to 50. 
I have for so long wanted to do cycling on a budget, 100 pounds, can I do it? Because I think I can. The problem with what I think I can do is it requires you to have tools and be mechanically minded. Which, like, it, it's always this weird thing, because when I've thought about it, the first time I ever thought about it was because of a mate who was like, oh, I want to buy this bike, it's 100 quid, you know, it's this, and I, I want to get into cycling, but I can only really spend 100 quid, and they were looking at a 100 pound brand new bike. And I was like, mate, you could get so much more if you bought this, like, second-hand bike and then we did it up. And the thing with that was that that was fine because he could have brought that bike round to my house and I have all the tools. So my thought was then, what if you buy a bike and take it to a shop? But the problem is, there's a chance the shop charges you a shit ton for parts. You know, you take it there for a £25, £30 service, whatever their base level service is, and they charge you shit loads for parts. Which is fair, because a bike shop can't let you go with a bro with a, like a, uh, eh, it'll probably work. Whereas I'm much more likely to spend, and, and their, in terms of their cost efficiency, they can't, they can't spend ages scrubbing fucking bearings clean and repacking them with grease. It's cheaper for them to tell you, get a new bearing, get a new pack of bearings, and that's parts. So, whereas for me, it's like, yeah, I'll spend an afternoon fucking scrubbing bearings. Yeah, we replaced everything. Uh, I mean, hell, I've been told that bi uh, bikes I've taken in aren't worth repairing. It was quite funny because there was a lad there that didn't want to say not worth it. Oh shit, I'm finished. And I was like, mate, I can buy. I Basically, it was a BMX wheel. And he was like, I don't want to say it's not. You could tell he didn't want to say it. And I said, so basically, it's not worth repairing because you can buy a pair of wheels off eBay for 80 quid. And he said, yeah, I didn't want to say it wasn't worth repairing it. Right, yeah, kind of. I got the vibe off of you that, you know, you were telling me it's going to be... But the labour to rebuild the wheel because the part that had broken was the hub. So gone, off goes the hub. You need a new set of spokes. The spokes and labour would have been the same cost as buying a second-hand wheel that works. All I would have had left was a rim, which had a fucking dent in it anyway, because it was a BMX rim. <laughs> so I was like, ah, fuck it. Just buy. You know, for 80 quid, I got two I got two wheels, which is sick, and they work, and they're brilliant wheels now. Uh, 31, 46, 383. Cheers, Turbo. Nice one.